Hey guys and welcome to another video and this time it's a tutorial about drawing female manga bodies. This is something you have always asked me to do and I decided to give you a fully explained lesson about drawing the female body. So let's begin. You will need paper, pen and eraser and that's about it. So today we will learn how to draw a female body by counting heads like one two three four five six i literally printed out tiny heads to help you out understand this technique it's funny it's easy and it's explained in detail in my book manga crash course so i will be using one of my lessons you can find in my book to explain you step by step in this video how to draw a female body for a typical manga girl which is a young adult or a teenager so here I have prepared six heads which I will be placing one on top of the other because we will use heads as the main height for a person. So first thing you will definitely need to draw is a straight line. Try not to press your pen too much and always keep at least a centimeter or I don't know half an inch from the edges of the paper. This is important because people always draw bodies and forget to leave out space for the feet and for something on their characters' heads like hats or puffy um, hair hairstyles and stuff like that or may maybe cat ears and stuff like that. So always keep some space from the edges of the drawing. Next step is to make this straight line into six parts. Uh, what I usually do is split the line in half, mark the half of the line. You don't need to be precise about this unless you want to. If you feel insecure, you can always use a ruler and make six equal parts by calculating them on a ruler. So what we need to do here is to use every half of the line and split it again in three equal parts. Now this is a tricky part and trust me you don't need to get it really too precise but they need to be at least similar in size. I never use the rulers to just go 100% into detail about this. So next thing when we have this is to draw a head. So the first head, head number one, is reserved only for the character's head. Uh, from the tip of the, the bare head to the tip of the character's chin. Nothing less, nothing more. So this is the head number one. Number two, head number two is used to mark the end of the character's chest and from, the, from here to here we need to make a third of this part right around here to um, mark a place where the collarbone is. I usually make a tiny V shape to mark the character's neckline. This is really important to know because if you make the neck too thick you will get a boy and you don't want that. So try to make girls necks as wide as maybe a third of the head's width. So you only use this to transfer down and to know how thick your neck will be 
well, your character's neck. Uh, on this line for the collarbone uh, should be a line that shows us where the shoulders are. So the shoulders for characters, uh, female manga characters, are usually as wide as the head itself plus a half of the head. So we can use this size and transfer it down to get how wide her shoulders will be. And of course, the main mistake people usually make is to make the shoulders look like this. This is wrong. You need to make the shoulders slide down from the neck like two slip and slides. And don't forget to make the shoulders base get, look like they're based on two circles. They need to go a little bit curvy. Okay, so female characters are really curvy and usually short characters uh, which are six heads tall because we have one two three four five six heads uh, Six heads are reserved for boys teens and short girls and almost every manga girl in um, any manga uh, Series or anime shows are Actually six heads tall. So this is a universal manga height Okay, so next up is the breasts. To make the breasts, you can use the line for the shoulders and draw, draw out two droplets connected at the edge of the head number two. Then, when you have the shape you want, you can just go on the sides and just mark them a little bit. Don't go into detail because there will be clothes over this body and a lot of different details so we'll just leave it here. Uh, next up is the torso. Uh, you need to realize one thing about difference between girls and boys bodies because girls have the hourglass shaped body and the boys have v-shaped body. So we need to use the shape of the hourglass and transfer it uh, to heads number two and heads number three. So we literally make a thin hourglass shape. So we just transfer this shape to here. Uh, this hourglass, the top of the hourglass will be smaller behind the breasts and the the entire head number three is actually the bottom of the hourglass. Uh, this is only just to help you um, remember that girls have tiny waists right beneath the breasts and wide hips. And no, it won't look them uh, make them look fat. I will show you a trick how to make them look curvy, but not fat so don't be afraid um, when we're done with head three uh, we need to make a small triangle to make the crotch area for the girl and then we can proceed on drawing out her legs uh, since we have three heads remaining the head number four five and six here um, we can split these three heads in half and this is where the height for the knees will be. So what we need to do is track these two parts of the head number three. This is the base for the bones of the thighs. And uh, legs are never uh, drawn like straight lines. No, head, uh, legs have their own shape. Uh, for example, if our knees are here, then uh, the thighs will go a little bit curvy and outward. Uh, as for the rest of the legs, uh, we need to draw out the base of the feet, which I usually draw as triangles, and then connect the triangles, which are only the heels of the feet, with the knees. And the knees 
connect with bones which are a little bit of an S shape. This will help you shape up your character to look more natural but minimalistic enough to make it look uh, manga-like. And of course, uh, the main reason we uh, left out a piece of paper right underneath the triangles is because we need to draw out the rest of her feet. I only use two triangles and then fill in the details later. So now we only lack arms. Uh, if you want to make this into pure numbers, like math, if you like math, I personally don't, but if you do, you can always remember that this bone is actually as tall as one and a half heads. This here. This area is also the same size. Okay, so let's get on to the arms. So uh, with this height of a girl, um, the, the correct length from uh, shoulder to elbow is equal as one head. So we just transferred the size of one head and here we go, we have elbows. Then we use the same size and make the other bone for the arm. And the last thing we need to draw out is her palms. Uh, usually in manga, girls have teeny tiny palms, um, well, hands. So to use to draw out correct uh, size of the of the hands, you will need to like use maybe two thirds of the head size, and this is the correct size for the well, height is the correct size for the hands for the girls. They have really tiny hands, so don't overdo it and don't make yaoi hands on girls, please. I will teach you how to make uh, proper boys too in one of my next tutorials, so don't worry, we'll do everything step by step. Uh, okay, when we have everything planned out in a correct size where no arm or leg is too long or too short, we will continue to shape them. Uh, shaping is the tricky part. This is the part that you will have to uh, repeat, repeat, repeat to get your perfect shape because some characters are skinny, some are fat, some are muscly, some are well developed, some are um, a little bit scrawny and there's a different type of shaping their bodies uh, you will need to learn by observing characters, reading manga, watching anime, looking at real people even, and just transfer that onto this skeleton. This time I will show you some tricks. I usually draw out two parallel lines to make this part of the arm. Try not to separate the hands from the breast because you have something that is called an armpit right here and it connects this entire part so don't make them go apart it's not natural uh, next i use a shape of um uh, like a teardrop but it's upside down i use that to shape this part of the arm and uh, I use a triangle to shape out the hand which is uh, uh, moved on the side well watched from the side and then you can add a thumb and little fingers and you get the shape of an arm uh, important note when you draw clothes on your characters, you need to draw out uh, bodies beneath that clothes first. Because if you draw, um, for example, if you draw a dress and then you don't know how long the legs beneath the dress are, believe me, I have seen some hilarious examples of people drawing out the dresses first and then you realize there's a person with no legs or feet beneath that skirt or dress. So don't, don't be hasty and just try to draw out the body first. Next up, uh, to make your character look 
skinny but curvy you need to place a triangle right here beneath this triangle for the crotch because when they have this thigh gap that's what makes the character look skinny but add on a curvy shape right from the hips to make voluptuous thighs but uh, keep the the thigh gap here so here is how you get a character which looks curvy and yet skinny and of course you can use the tear shape to shape out this part of the legs and of course the knees are usually just one line or maybe a line and a dot and that is how you just mark that part of the legs as for feet you shouldn't draw out too big of feet on your characters well female characters so I will deduce the size of the feet uh, also this is my personal <laughs> deformity uh, uh, you will notice it with yourself and your drawing uh, you uh, we usually tend to draw bodies that look like our own body so if you have I don't know larger breasts or larger feet or larger hands you will draw your characters with those same parts for example I ha I'm a tall person so I can draw out larger uh, feet and arms um, on my characters because I am a really tall person okay so this is the main base and now you have learned the entire quick way to draw a body if you want to place this body uh, in a movement then you need to visualize this as a doll and just use these bones change their shape just move them around but keep their sizes so you just need to transfer this shape and move it from the elbow and transfer this size to here mark it transfer the size of the hand here and then you can just make this person look like they're waving or showing something if you perhaps make a different type of hand you just need to visualize that this is a doll and all of these joints are movable but you keep just moving the sizes, just transferring the sizes. It's, it's look, something like geometry, but it's not as scary as it looks because when you know this type of measurements, then you will know you won't ever make a mistake. And even me, even I, uh, the person who professionally draws, I always do this pattern all over again just to make sure I never make a mistake some artists try to go faster and they usually forget to measure their bodies and it's a gamble and I personally don't like to gamble I really like to just make sure that everything is in its proper place and as a bonus I want to show you how to draw something that a lot of you is having trouble with and that's how to draw a body from the side I see so many artists who draw and paint perfectly but they keep making the character look like um, half of his body was maimed when seen from the side uh, to properly draw out body from the side you will use these exact measurements so you will need a straight line at the same size of your character you will need to use all these heads heads number one two three four five and six you will need to learn well you will need to transfer all of this and make a new line 
with these markings. And then you will just need to place all of these parts as seen from the side. I will show you how. First of all, when you draw a head from the side, uh, the easiest part, easiest way to draw it is to make a circle, then a straight line, and then just make out the jaw. This is like a simplified skull shape. Uh, then you can use the lessons I have placed in my tutorial folder to uh, see the lessons about drawing faces, how many times you need to split this shape to get a manga face. Okay, so let's let's continue. Uh, so the, the head number one is reserved only, this space is only for the head. Next up we have head number two. And hand number two should contain the height for the shoulders. This, this, this line in particular, we will transfer to this body. And these circles actually have a really important role to play on this body. Uh, the most important part when drawing the body from the side is to draw out the spine correctly. Uh, the spine is located from head number one to head number three in a shape that looks like an S shape. So we have an indentation for the back of the head, then we have the place where the shoulders are, then we have the waist, and then we have the hiney. Uh, once upon a time people had like an extension of the spine we used to have tails earlier on in the evolution process some people are even born with a tail but it falls off shortly after birth so that's something that should remind you of how the how the, the shape of the back is supposed to look like and it looks like an s shape so just a little elongated. Uh, we need to start that shape right here at the bottom of the skull. Then we get it pop on the side where the shoulders are. Then uh, somewhere in the middle of head three, we need to make the indentation on the spine. And the little tail uh, shows us where the behind of our character is on the bottom of the number three head okay uh, as for as for necks you should use the same the same neck size well width and transfer it here so the neck is as wide from the front as it is from the side and then we need to uh, shape out the body. People usually forget that human bodies have ribs. So you need to draw out ribs in this area from number one head to a little bit under the breasts, uh, underneath the head number two. Um, then we just need to do something that connects the neck collarbone we follow the size of the ribs to make a nice straight belly but since this is a girl and not a boy we need to add breasts so what you need to do is draw a line over the ribs and then curve them, curve, curve the rest and then erase this part. Of course larger breasts are finished, well the drawing of them is finished a little lower. Uh, if the character has smaller breasts then you draw them a little bit closer to the ribs etc. So it's up to you which kind of character you like to shape up. Next up um, this little triangle here, we can draw it out 
if you like as a triangle here as well and here in the middle of the original line for the height we need to shape up shape out our legs um, between heads four and five we need to transfer the height for the knees on the same main line as you can see a uh, human body is curvy but still the main parts of it are actually in the center so that our bodies can maintain balance so the main part uh, of this line is the skull the shoulders the waist and the beginning of the uh, legs and the knees and the actually the heels but i will show you that later so as i said the natural shape for the thighs is actually curvy so you need to place the form of the thighs a bit outward then to maintain balance and curvy shape of the body uh, you will need to do uh, opposite thing with the rest of the legs and of course on this side you need to place the shape for the thighs well not the thighs sorry the shape for the um, heels uh, and in my book I explained that the easiest part to draw out uh, feet is actually to place a trapeze or square shape for the heel and a triangle for the rest of the of the foot uh, and now let's try to shape the entire thing uh, you will need to definitely shape a little bit of the behind then I usually do a straight line for the back of the thighs just follow the line that we just drew for the rest so, of the thigh. Uh, when drawing out knees, that's one important thing. When you draw out knees, they need to be popping up a little bit too. Just, just like the thighs, they need to pop outwards. And then the, the area beneath the knees is popping out on the opposite side. And there we go. Then we shape the entire thing. As you can see, uh, the foot is perfectly aligned with the last head here, but from the front, the uh, the, the feet are actually looking like they're going under the line. This is called foreshortening. It's something that happens when you draw out something that is going right in our faces go getting closer to us that's a, a little bit of a more complicated thing but i will get on it in one of our next lessons okay and the rest we need to do uh, if you want to make this character look more feminine you will definitely start the the hips a little bit higher and and you can even i don't know make the booty a little bigger if you if you like you can you can definitely get so many different types of female bodies but I personally like drawing curvy bodies uh, I really like teaching lessons about more curvy characters and uh, as for the last piece we lack we will use the height of one head connect that height with the shoulder and don't forget um, this important thing when you transfer the size of the head again and then two-thirds for the for the hands the natural way the hands actually stand is a little bit angled the arms are not a straight line they're actually angled so the elbow is actually pointing towards this way and draw out two parallel lines to get the shape of the arms and of course teeny tiny hands and 
that's it. That's pretty much it. Um, you can find out how to draw a female and male face by looking at these links. Here you can see the basics of a female face. Here you can see the basics of a male face. And as for the rest of the lessons, I will definitely uh, work more on tutorials on body shaping for manga characters, females, males, how to draw them out uh, while moving or in action poses. And if you can't wait for those tutorials to come fast enough, you have them all available to you step by step in my Manga Crash Course book. You can find out where to get one in the description. See you guys next time!